We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by Her Excellency Ambassador Suaid Shalabi, the former assistant uh, to Foreign Minister. It's a very good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us, Madam Ambassador. First and foremost, uh, how do you evaluate the current developments on the ground so far uh, in the Gaza Strip, Madam? Well, it is, of course, uh, very disastrous and very serious, very depressing. It is, uh, uh, it is very sad to uh, see all the world, the international community, uh, watching what is happening, destruction of houses on top of the um, you know, civilians and killings of uh, babies and children. And even the schools uh, are bombed, the churches and the palace and the and the mosques. Uh, so it is a disastrous situation that uh, nobody is accepting, whether it is uh, um, in the in our region or in the far American Latin American countries or African countries. Everybody is uh, shocked to the situation that is. Is uh, giving uh, the, a, a big a big lesson to the world that that uh, destruction is the way to go when when there is any conflict the, um, there is no international law there is no international humanitarian law and it is uh, it is really collective punishment to the Palestinians who have uh, who are not Hamas if you are. If, the, if there is uh, a war against Hamas, then who, who is paying the price are the Palestinian civilians, women and children. Absolutely. Now, Madam Ambassador, you know, how do you evaluate the reaction of the international community? We've seen varied reactions, uh, as well as the United Nations. Uh, they have also had uh, a specific call to at least allow for a humanitarian ceasefire, allow the delivery of aid. Yet the international community, most of them seem reluctant to take uh, you know, an open stance to call it what it is. Well, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this, is, this has been uh, um, requested by the United States. They gave a free hand to the Israelis to bombard and not to open any, uh, to bombard the uh, Gaza and not to open any of the borders. So that is, uh, they have sealed all the borders and they have left only the, the Rafah border for the humanitarian corridor. And at the same time, they are limiting what is going to the Gazans uh, from humanitarian aid only, food and medical aid and now we are starting to take some um, some cases who have who have to be uh, uh, put in a hospital. Mm -hmm. They cannot. Yes. Uh, the hospitals have been bombarded also. So there is no there are no place to to save those who have been injured uh, badly. So Egypt is a role to facilitate the procedures for the safe and complete sustainable access to humanitarian aid and relief to the Gaza. Absolutely. As mm -hmm. you mentioned, Madam Ambassador, Egypt is playing a critical role with regards even to the delivery, not just the receiving of the humanitarian aid from all around the world, but its delivery and its crossing of the border into the Gaza Strip. How uh, you know, important and pivotal is the role that Egypt is playing, even in terms of its organization of the different uh, aid convoys, whether they're uh, medicine, food, water, etc., to cross uh, into the Strip? Yes. And failure to the accessibility of this aid and mm. failure to the uh, fuel, uh, the, 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 the delivery of fuel, it will lead to a humanitarian disaster. Yes. Because the, even the hospitals will not be They're able not work. to uh, work. Mm. And it, uh, actually, it will destabilize the whole regional security. Yes. So it will endanger the stability of the region if there are so many uh, Gazans who are going to leave. Uh, because of uh, because of the situation, the, uh, it's, a, it's a humanitarian relief. There has to be a humanitarian corridor for them to leave Gaza. But where do they go? That is um, the big problem, the big question. Um, yes. Of course, uh, the, the Israeli attacks are 
are collective punishment for them and they are and they are responsible the israel is responsible for for uh, putting uh, back gaza into uh, li putting life again into gaza so how are they going to manage with these uh, with these uh, gazans who have left the, the northern part as they as they are asking to do mm. and they are living now in a disastrous situation in the southern part of gaza yes and even the refugee camps that they are living in are themselves being targeted i mean we're seeing targets on civilian structures uh, how yes. do you see israel you know defending their decisions to target civilian structures like hospitals for example well uh, this is not uh, this is not a, w a compatible war because uh, uh, because israel has uh, has superiority in all the the um, uh, ammunition and all the, the army the support army in the world so what they are doing is they are using the, the, the most advanced um, technological weapons in order to distract uh, Gaza. And, and Egypt is worried about uh, these potential threats and worried about its own security because giving the links between Hamas and the uh, Sinai province uh, and also the, the civilians who have been um, attacked uh, how are how, where are they going to go where are they going to escape so uh, israel is not taking the, the responsibility um, it is it is um, it is do, doing what is uh, what is requested uh, by the united states and all the european countries who mm -hmm. have given her a superiority they have offered even personnel to help you know like uh, the marines and all these uh, um, uh, high technolo technological uh, uh, ammunition and, and bombs. And we haven't heard about all these uh, bombs even in the Ukrainian war. Absolutely, Madam Ambassador. And also, you know, they've expanded the Gaza blockade. They are trying to isolate the whole area from the world. We've seen uh, cutting electricity, cutting the Internet. How does this further allow them to continue violating, uh, you know, international laws, humanitarian rights, even going up to war crimes, uh, humanitarian war crimes? Yes, of course, it's going. This, this, uh, they have to be, they have to be, uh, uh, the, the, the whole world has to stop them because there has to be a permanent ceasefire. There has to be a humanitarian corridor. There has to be, because Israel wants to push the Palestinians out of Gaza yes. and to destroy Gaza. So mm -hmm. they want them to go to the Egyptian territories or any Arab country. Mm -hmm. And this is not a solution because, as you know, the peace process has never started since... Um, Ten more, more than 10 years ago, yes. nothing has, has happened. And that is why the Gazans and the Palestinians in general, they don't have a, a hope for the future. And the, the, the mass exodus of Gazans will, will make a bigger problem in the region because yes. uh, uh, they, the, they, there has to be, um, of course, there has to be a decision in the United States nations and in the general assembly they have taken a decision to uh, stop the war and to open the border for humanitarian aid but it has not taken place because the united states is always using the veto mm. in the U united in the security council mm -hmm. and of course the security council uh, is, is uh, is not able to take a resolution, and they are the only institution Entity. that could uh, provide peace and security in the world. Yes, absolutely. Finally, Madam Ambassador, you mentioned a very important issue, which is that you know of the danger of the current conflict uh, in Gaza spilling over to reach outer regions and other uh, you know countries in the region. How uh, much of a danger is this during the, this current critical uh, time in the conflict? Well, it is it is very critical, of course, and we have to manage manage it very well because this is our borders, and the Egypt security is, of course, 
our first priority yes. and our this is on top of our agenda. And even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has issued a statement warning of the grave consequences and dangers of the repercussions of the humanitarian crisis that results from the large-scale ground attack on Gaza. And uh, it has the Israeli government responsible for violating the United Nations General Assembly resolution that was issued, and it called for immediate ceasefire and humanitarian truth to be placed between Hamas and Israel. But unfortunately, this is not taking place until now. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, I'd like to thank you very, very much, Your Excellency, Ambassador Saad Shalabi, the former assistant to the foreign minister. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time and for your insight for joining us on today's edition uh, of Cairo Local Time. And uh, still with the file uh, of the Gaza uh, Strip, the Egyptian foreign ministry said in a statement on Thursday that Egypt uh, will help evacuate about 7,000 foreigners as well as dual nationals from the war-ravaged Gaza Strip. In a meeting with foreign diplomats, the Assistant Foreign Minister said Egypt was preparing to facilitate the reception and evacuation of foreign citizens.